Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about OpenID and Keycloak. And in order to talk about OpenID, we will need a client. So I want to create a Java client using Quarkus. So if we switch over to my screen here, we have this POM file for a Quarkus client. And in this POM file, the important part here is the Quercus I O I E I D C. So this is the Open ID ID client library for Quercus, and we also use the Quercus key cloak authorization to simplify things. Um, so that is the main things that are added here. And Quercus is a pretty cool thing to run your Java applications, and you have some kind of a web service that is deployed either natively or in a Docker image, or you can yeah, run it in a bunch of different ways uh, as a library and so on. Um, so in here, we have an admin resource. This is only available to people that has the role of admin. So you need to be authenticated and have the role of admin in order to get this resource. And then we have the user resource, which is API users, and here we can get the identity of me. So very few things added here, but we can get information about me, and we can connect to the admin resource if we have that role. And then we have this uh, configuration here, where we configure where our authentication service is. In, in this case, it's uh, on localhost 8080, and then we will set up a realm here with my realm. The ID of the client should be Quercus and we should have some secret. That is something that we will change later on. We don't verify TLS at the, this point and we enforce policies, very important. And then down here we have a realm config and that is more when you are running in the uh, key cloak in a docker image it will be created and we also want to set a port here that is different from 8080 up here because we want this not to collide with what we are installing here. So let's start key cloak and in order to do that we have downloaded key cloak it's a zip file available on the git repository it's open source you can go in and help out if you want but it's just a thing that we download see um, if we go into this directory here we can start it in a development mode so there's a uh, bin key cloak kc and then start devel that is to start development there is guides to install this on a production environment and so on not going to cover that in this tutorial it's more of a configuration thing here because there is a bunch of things that we need to look into and figure out in order to get this up and running so let's start that service up. It takes a little while and then we have something running as an... That we have started this server. We can create a user here. So let's do that. Create it with a very simple password and create. And then we can go into the admin console. And here we need to log in, of course. In the admin console, the first thing we want to do is create our own realm. So we are in the master realm at the moment, but when you are working with OpenID, having another realm where you're actually logging in and having all the configuration is a good thing. So let's create my realm here. Uh, my realm. And there is a bunch of extra things you can have a resource file here for your creation. So let's create that and enable it. So now I'm in my realm instead. And here I want to create a client. So let's create a client, call this my client. And we don't have a description for it. And this is a test client for my cloak uh, or key cloak. So let's create it against the key cloak app and add the web origins of keycloak.org. If I save that. And then I can go into this uh, specific service here. So we clear the configuration. So if we go to key cloak app uh, slash app, we get to this page. 
keycloak URL and that our local host 8080, my realm, my client. We save that and I sign in. Then I go to my sign in page here and if I go in with admin, query, that will not work because we don't have any user at the moment. So here we should be able to sign in with the user. So let's go over to users and create users. So in my realm, we don't have the administrator user at the moment. So that's the difference here. We have a master realm where we have the admin user and the my realm, we don't have that user. So in here, we want this user to uh, don't have any specific actions. And here we can have my user, not an email. Don't need, email should be verified. Uh, let's call this Daniel person. Person. So let's see, I've created my user here. And then I can go into credentials and set the password. Let's set the simple password for that as well. Save that, save password. So now if I go in here and log in with my user, that should be available. Uh, you need your password to activate your account. Yeah, so that is the problem here where we have these actions where we need to be, uh, have the password verified. So one thing that you could do when you create this password, so let's go in here again and create again, set that is not temporary. That's an important part. Otherwise, you need to log in as that user and change the password. Um, so if you set up a password for someone else, then you need to do this, create a new password. Um, I'll lo log in with my user instead and don't create a new password there. So now I'm logged in. Hello, Daniel Persson. So it works with the Keycloak uh, site. So now we have something that is set up. I should now be able to create a Quercus client that should I could log in with this user. So now I want to create a Quercus client. So let's go in here, type Quercus, do next. And in here we want to do client authentication. And we also want to run the authorization. So we actually want to say, I all want to authenticate that my, I'm my user for instance, and I want to authorize these different services using this endpoint. So let's create that one. And under credentials here, we have a client secret. So let's copy that over to our client here. So let's go into this applications, put that in here. Now we want to start the service. So first off, we will run the MVM install the native. So this will create a native executable that we can run in order to log into our system. And this will take a little while in order to build this, but it will download a Docker image and build it inside of that Docker image in order to get something that we can run natively on this system. And depending on what kind of system you are running, it will be built in an optimized way to run on that system, which is pretty cool. So this will take a while, so I'll be back with you soon. So now that we have uh, built this application, we can start it and it's in dot target and it's called security cloak application quick start one zero zero snapshot runner. So it's pretty much an application called runner when you're done. Um, so it will run this job application as a native application and it will run on 8082. Now in order to use this, I will use curl. So I will switch over here to my documentation. And here I have a curl command, which will run insecure, which means that it will not do SSL. It will post, and it will post against this Quercus, in, uh, this Keycloak installation, uh, realms, my realm, protocol, open ID connect, and I want a token from it. We want to log in with this user Quercus uh, and the ID or the security that we had here. And then I want a header for the content type. I want to do a form URL encoded. 
And I, the data I will send is the username for my user, the password for my pass, uh, password here, and grant type is password. And if I do that, I will get a, a JSON back. If I run that in a different console, I will get JSON back, but I have this simplified thing here that will read a JSON and get the raw output of a specific path, in this case, access token. So if I run that, I will only get the token here. So if I copy that token and put that into my bearer token here, so this will go against my application now, the Quercus application, localhost 8082, the API users me. So this API here, API users and the path me, and we should get the identity back there. So let's run that. Oh, let's copy the whole command again here and put it in there. And now you see that we have a connection here. The username is my username and it worked just fine. It was okay. I was authenticated and authorized to run this command. If I do the same with this bearer token against the admin interface, I should get the information that I'm not allowed to run this. But in this case, I was granted. So currently we haven't set up anything that require us to run against this admin interface. It's just another interface on this. So we want to secure this one. We are granted at the moment, but that is not what we want. The admin interface should be secured, right? Uh, so we want to create a role that is required in order to use this admin interface. So let's switch over to my screen here again, and then we will have a realm roles. In here we can create a new role and we could call that admin. So now we have an admin role here, and that is what we want to use in order to require logins here. So in order to configure this, we need to configure the client again. So we go into Quercus and then we go into authorization. And under authorization, we can configure a bunch of things. One of the things we can configure is resources. And let's create a new resource here. Let's call that the admin resource. The URL for this is admin, so admin star and authorization scopes. We don't have any of those. And we don't have any types or anything like that. So let's save that there. So now we have a resource and this resource is what we want to secure. And we will create a permission for this resource and it could have a policy, but this is the uh, admin policy or permission, permission, the admin permission. And let's go back here, permissions, admin permission. And it could have a policy, as we said, we could have a default policy here, but if we create a new policy, create policy, it's a role policy. This is the admin role policy. And the role we require is admin. So we'll create that here and it's required. If we save that, now we have a policy that we could put into our permission. So we will have the admin policy here, save that. And that permission is steering this resource. So there is a bunch of different steps here in order to get this up and running. But if we have all of that set and we run this again, we will get 401 unauthorized. So now we can't get in with that user anymore. We need to have someone that has the role of admin. So let's create a new user here. We will call that admin. And this is the administrator. Administrator. Create that. And then role mapping. We will assign a role. This would be an admin. So now we have an admin down here. If we now go back here, and we will use a different access token here. So here we have the same login user, but I will log in with the username admin and the password QWERTY. I just remembered we didn't set up a password. So let's go back here to the admin, 
Let's create credentials, set password, let's do QWERTY again, and then temporary off. So we save that password, now it ha the admin has a password. So username, admin, password, QWERTY, grant type password, and we'll get the access token from that. So if we go in here, push that in, we will get a different access token. Let's copy that one. And let's go back to the Java interface here. Copy that over. So now we have a different role that will go to the API admin. We push that in and we will get granted again. So now we have gone through setting up Keycloak, creating a user and a realm, and trying that out in the web GUI. And then when we got that go going, we went over to creating an application a native Quercus application that had the parts in order to run different uh, API URLs. We had this user me API where we could get out the user information for this specific user, which worked just fine with any user. Then we wanted to secure up this admin interface. And we didn't want to do anything with our application. We just wanted to go into Keycloak and Co uh, connect this specific resource to a policy, a permission, a policy, and in this case, a role saying that only people with the admin role can go to the admin user um, interface in this case. And when we had set that up, we realized that the normal user could no longer go in and actually reach that interface or that resource. And after that, that resource, um, we created an admin user, gave it a password, gave it the role admin and tried to log in and we was granted access. So this is a very powerful way in order to just write an application as usual and then configure the different requirements for logged in users for different resources. So you can just implement your application and don't really care about who should have access to what and then use the OpenID interface and Keycloak in order to actually steer what users has access to which resources. So you can move all that authentication and authorization logic outside of your application. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.